While we haven't gotten any more transfer portal commits, it feels like we're really close to breaking through. That's going to be our conversation today on the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Wildcats Today, joined as always by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, it's Friday. How you doing? I'm doing well. It's a nice day outside, so can't complain. Yeah, it is. I have um, yet to step outside of the house. I wouldn't know, but I, I'm going to – no, that's not true. I walk the dogs, but I'll take your word for it. I did walk the dogs. But getting straight into this, a handful of talented players are going to be on campus this weekend for visits. Now, yes, um, you haven't had any commits since Amari Williams committed whenever that was Sunday, you know, five, six days ago, whatever it was. You haven't had any commits, but we are seeing visitors – a ton of visitors coming up. Um, I, I think the um, we'll talk about the Otega um, Oway kid from Oklahoma. He isn't in town this weekend. He was in town yesterday. And then I think the rest of the names we're going to discuss are in town this weekend. But, I mean, we're going to run through some names, and Carson and I are going to give you our thoughts on these players, give you our thoughts when it comes to chances. Um, but there's going to be some talented players on campus this weekend, talented players on campus this week. So we're going to run through all of it. And then Osabor's visit is coming up here um, in a few days as well. So let's get right into it with Otega Owe from Oklahoma. Carson, what are your thoughts on this kid? How do you feel about him? Yeah, I like him. Um, he's a he's a really good defender, which I mm -hmm. like because we a bunch of the players we've been recruiting um, as of late uh, haven't always been the best defenders. They're more of an yeah. offensive weapon, but this kid is a lockdown defender, and I'm pretty sure he's only – either he finished up his sophomore season or he is a sophomore. He's listed as a sophomore, so unless he redshirted, he'll, he'll come in with, with two years of eligibility. Yeah, so two years, well, but. two years of eligibility is huge there, so you, you have the chance to keep him another year too. So Yeah, it's not I a really one-year like that. Yeah, so he averaged 11.4 points per contest last year, 3.8 rebounds, one assist. He also shot about 50% from the field, which for a guard is – impressive he picked then, up a crystal ball yesterday from really? uk too for uk yeah too. and then he um he well we're going to talk about another crystal ball we'll get to that later um but he shot 37.7 percent from three i love a dude like that just three and d you know he's not clearly not out there to assist he's out there three and d and you gotta have guys like this he doesn't strike me as a guy who if kentucky gets some of these players we anticipate them getting will be a starter but he's going to be a legitimate quality guy off the bench who can give you multiple years of, of eligibility, multiple years of, of, of great play. So um, the only thing that I would like to see cleaned up is his free throws during the 21, or 22, 23 season and 23, 24 season. He shot 65% two years ago and 64.3% last year. Got to clean that up a little bit as a guard. Need you more at the 75 range. But aside from that, I like everything else I see. And he's not a little guard. He's a big dude, 6'5", 215. That'll play. That'll play. I mean, he can guard. He can he can, he can can defend the high level, and he can score a little bit. I mean, what's that's good. He, that means he can guard game. one through three, so that's big. Yeah, 11.4 points per game. You got to remember, I mean, this isn't the NBA. That's in, in college – for a, a role player, you'll take 11.4 points per game all day. I mean, Reed Shepard only averaged 12.5. Like, mm -hmm. you got to put that in perspective. A lot of people here, well, 11.4. He was also at an Oklahoma team that at one point was really good. So, he's a kid I'm excited about. Carson, how do you feel like chances there? What are your thoughts? You crystal ball, are you feeling good that we got one? I, I, think, I think I feel pretty good about it, mm -hmm. um, especially coming off the visit yesterday. Hopefully, we hear something soon on him, honestly. Yeah. I, I, would, I would hope so. A commit. I, the snowball effect is real. I would love to see a commit come in because it just – its I'm telling you, it snowballs. It, it does. People people want to – that's kind of how it happens. So I think you need one guy to pop, and then I think you're going to – like I have a feeling when Kentucky gets a commit, you're going to see like six in a weekend. Like it's going to be like bam, 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 bam. Carson, we're going to be busy as heck when that happens. But um, – so let's get into this next kid, a kid who – I you know we, we watched tape on him, and I watched tape. The name didn't sound familiar – when we talked about him last week, but then I remember, oh, yeah, I watched tape on this kid. He's a menace. Andrew Carr from Wake Forest. I love this kid's tape. I think he's one of the most criminally underrated players in the portal. I He is not being talked about enough. So what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I finally got the chance to sit down and kind of watch some of his film. He he looks really good. He's a, He can stretch you out because he's a good three-point shooter. He's, he's good at passing. He's efficient, and he's really good at 
post play. Like uh, we didn't see that much last year. None of our guys really yeah. could back you down and hit a hook shot over you. But um, I really like that. Uh, you have to have that threat. You know, look at yeah. look at the best two teams last year, Purdue and UConn. What did they have? They had post play. So yeah. you got to have a guy like that. Yeah. 6'10", 220 pounds, average 13 and a half points per game for the Demon Deacons, which is a pretty cool name. Um, 6.8 boards, 1.5 assists, and he did shoot 37.1% from deep and 78.1% from the charity stripe, but you take that from a big man all day long. Sounds like he'll be on, um, on campus this weekend. Another kid I'm really excited about. I, I like him. I think he's the perfect five to back up Amari Williams. Although Williams can stretch it out a little bit, but I, I have if we get Osabor and Williams, Williams is going to play the five, and Osabor will play the four. And I, I like Carr to back up Williams. I think that'll quickly become one of the better front courts, um, oh, yeah. center duos in in the SEC. Yeah. Um. So the next guy is um, Davon Smith from Utah. I like this kid. Probably we're going to talk about Aiden Mahaney a little bit. Who we talked about him the other day. Him and Mahaney, I like equally. I like this kid a ton, Carson. What are your thoughts on him? I know you feel the same. Yeah, I I love this kid, and he's listed at six foot. So you might be like, oh, he's an undersized guard. Go watch this tape. Yeah, he does not play undersized. He the first dunk highlight was just a hammer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And so he's he's also as, as much as he is athletic and really great at offense, he's very efficient, and he. He had, I think, either five or six triple doubles last year, which is absolutely absurd. For a six-foot guard? In one six season. Six-foot guard? Yeah. And we're talking about the Pac-12 here. We're not talking about, you know, he's not playing for Stonehill. I yeah. mean, this is this is the Pac-12. Not saying it's the best basketball conference in the world because it's not, but still, it's quality. They got quality. good teams. Yeah. Yeah. So 13.3 points per ball game for Smith. 6.3 rebounds per game. Would that have led Kentucky? It would be I close. Check on that. If it, it, yeah. But it would be close. So I'm going to check on that here in a second. 6.3 rebounds per game, 7.1 assists, shot 46.7% from the field, like you said, efficient, 40.8% from three. I read this stat line and just salivated. I was like, this guy is made for Mark Pope. He's efficient. He's physical. He's a grinder. He can shoot the ball. He can find teammates for open looks. 7.1 assists, I believe, is like a top 10 assist per game in college hoops. So this kid, don't miss on this kid. I will I will throw a fit on and, this show. And I will say, time. I really like our chances with this guy. Yeah. From what I've been hearing. All right, let's see if he. this will be hilarious. Would he have – I don't think so. Trey averaged seven point two. I thought Trey averaged around it, but still, I mean, would From he have been second? six nine to six foot? I mean, it's it's a big difference right there. Well, do the math on this. We have we had three seven footers on last year's roster, and they averaged four point eight rebounds, three point three rebounds, and three point three rebounds. This dude is six foot tall and averaged six point three rebounds. So there you go. And listen, and, and as much as we're joking, that shows he has heart. Heart, yes, no question. And we're not talking about Joey. But, I mean, the reality here is heart, yes, that's true. But, my goodness, having a guard who's not afraid to get in there and get a board, there's times where that can it. really help a team. I love it. So the next kid is the son of the NBA legend. Uh, it was Peja, right? Was that Peja? That was Peja Stojakovic. So Andre Stojakovic. Stojakovic. What are your thoughts on this kid? I don't know if I'm as sold on this as you. Let's have this conversation. I, I'm more of the thing. I, I, I think he's a project. I think he's yeah. a project, but yeah. you can see the upside. So in my opinion, I think if you're taking a project knowing he'll be here for two years, two, three yeah. years, then you do it, in my opinion, because there's, he has a lot of upside. Look, his dad was phenomenal in the NBA. So the skills mm -hmm. there, yeah. the genes are there. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with this as long as it's a project piece and he can come off the bench and play maybe six minutes a game, five minutes a game. I bet you'd uh, end up being more than that, but yeah, but, I like it though. I mean, I'll tell you this. I, well, first of all, six foot seven, 190 pounds and, and he can play. He's not a, obviously a point guard, but he, I think he can play the two. 
I'd say he's more of a wing. He's a, a stretch two wing kind of player, but he was he's he's there to shoot. He is here to shoot. He's like me at the YMCA. I'm here to shoot, and that is it. Um, average seven point eight points per game last year. Three point four rebounds. Me at the Y. I love saying me at the Y when talking about basketball, as if like I'm I'm good at basketball. Just there to um, shoot. Just there to shoot, baby. I was like five for twenty two yesterday in pickup, but I was there to shoot. Uh, zero point nine assists on the year. So he only shot thirty two point seven percent from three. And I'm not gonna sit here. I mean, you still. It'd be different if it was like 28. I mean, it's still 33 ish percent. Um, 22 minutes a ball game. I agree with you. It's a project. Um, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But if he's coming in like I need 23 minutes a game, I don't know if I want this kid playing 23 minutes a game. No, I'm yeah. cool with 10 minutes a game. Develop him, and then could he be a monster year three? I could see that happening. But I just I watched him play a, a few games, and I was like. I remember. I mean, former McDonald's All American. I watched him, and, I, and you can see. Well, the I think guy. I think his jump shot's a little unorthodox right now. Yeah. After watching him shoot, I think Pope can fix that, though. Yeah, I think he can work on his jump shot a little bit. He has a slow release, which mm -hmm. is not good. Um, he also shot fifty two point eight percent from the free throw line. Yeah, that's not like, good either. That ain't gonna play. But I think if he gets in UK system, gets a shooting coach, and Pope works on him a little bit, I think I think he'd be a good piece. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna sit here. I'm not gonna like punch a wall if he, we sign this kid. He's a good well, basketball. Boyakovich, dude, you get yeah. more media, I mean, you know, more ticket attention. sales. I'm just kidding. Not like we need a famous last name to sell tickets, but I mean, yeah. it is cool, you know. I mean, you'd see you Pages Tavakovich would be there. That's cool. Um, we'll get Bronny James next. That'd be really cool. No, but um, no, out on Bronny James, Carson Nash, <laughs> out on Bronny James. He's going to Duquesne. I already told you that. Huh? Is that a joke? I'm serious. No, I'm pretty sure because LeBron's uh, high school teammate got hired there oh, as the head coach. Okay. Um, so that's my, our thoughts on Stovjakovic. And I'm not once again, I'm not hating on the kid. I, I would be happy if we signed him. I just would like to sign him as a project rather than you know this is our guy. He's going to play 24 minutes a game unless he just really develops in the offseason, which could happen. I mean, once again, it's a wait and see thing. That's why he's a bit of a project. I mean, if you read 24/7 Sports, um. They're like kind of like transfer report on him. It's like the same thing. It's like a school's going to take him a project with a ton of upside. That's what he is. And I'm with, I'm cool with taking him that, at that. I just don't want to take him like, hey, this guy needs 24 minutes. But I don't think that's what we're doing. Yeah. So the last kid I want to talk about is the GOAT, Aiden Mahaney. Need this guy, want this guy, need him bad on this basketball team. What are your thoughts on him? What are your thoughts on our chances? Another recruitment that has been quiet so what what are your thoughts on this kid uh i really like him i think he fits yeah. the offense perfectly uh with what he does um the only thing is is i don't here's the thing because i don't think he can play i don't really think he's a two guard that much because i think he needs the ball in his hand and if you're gonna get uh the smith kid out of utah i mean that's your one like I, i'm picking the smith kid over mahaney but if mahaney comes right. in and wants to wants to run backup point i mean i would love that i i think he's really good i think he i do think he's really good and maybe you could work out a way to get him at the two i just think defensively he might struggle a little bit but he's i think three, though you know i mean yeah he, it's not like he's six foot one you know six foot I mean, yeah he's a little bit tall for playing the yeah two. but i like that smith kid a little bit more so if you're gonna have to sell oh, one or the other I'll oh, take you could kid. have a really long debate on this I mean, we could sit here and yell for hours uh, between Smith and Mahaney, and I'm with you. Like, oh, that's a tough, tough. one. That is yeah, a tough, tough one. Like, I want them both. I do. I, I do, mean, too. And, and, but I agree with you. It's like, does Smith – no, man. That's – that's. I mean, like, I, I feel like that's like sitting and trying to compl uh, think about, like, the life. I mean, it's like, whoa, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I can't even, like, contemplate – having to pick between those two guys. I like mm -hmm. them both a lot for different reasons. Um, I just don't know. I mean, really, like, we should almost, if they both commit, we should almost have, like, a who's PG1 conversation. Like, yeah, um, that'd be interesting. But um, Haney led the um, the Gales in, yes, that is St. Mary's mascot, um, in 
uh, scoring last year, 13.9 points per game, 2.6 rebounds, 2.6 assists, shot 35.5% from three, but he was like jacking them up, man. Like they were flying. So like nearly 36% when you're throwing up a ton of game. Like I can No, it. yeah. Him, so him, the difference between him and Smith is I feel way more confident about Mahaney, like in the zoom action coming off screens and being able to put up a shot. Smith has to be more set to um, succeed. Yeah. But I mean, uh, they both shoot a high percentage from three. Um, it's just uh, Mahaney's more of create your own shot type of guy. Yeah. So last conversation. What happened with Richie Sanders? I, I don't. And once again, we sit here. I did. I did the hashtag lock emoji. I mean, we did it. We did it. And I'll tell you this. Like, I've never seen so many people say that kid's a lock. And then he goes back. I, like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I was, I had the article pre-written. Like I'm talking, like I, I have no idea what happened there. I mean, Car I mean, I, Carson, what, what happened? What are your thoughts? My thoughts? Well, first off, I'm a little upset and I'm not saying it as in like, uh, like you can find his production in the transfer portal. I just don't think you can find that kid's heart in the transfer no, portal. Yeah. That's the thing. And I, I still kind of want to watch him play this year because he he still gets me excited. Like, I still yeah. like him a lot. Like, he's an awesome guy. Um, but, but I think I think part of it could be the fact that he does have a wife um, and they would have to both move out here. You know, it's a little more mature, a more mature situation than most of these kids are going through. So they really probably had to sit down and take time and be like, do we really want to completely change our lives, you know, like yeah. just move. So it's a harder decision than, than most people would think. Um, but you know, good luck to Richie Saunders. I yeah. still support the kid, dude. I love, I love hearing him talk. He's a great kid. He's yeah, got super high motor. He's super fun to watch. So I'll still be rooting for him. Yeah. See, I just don't get it. Cause I mean, I'm married to the game. I'm married to the game dog. You know, I'm just a, a I'm a hooper. So you know what I mean? No, just kidding. Just kidding. But, you know, I mean, pull up to the YMCA and just, you know, see what happens. I mean, I, I'm there. I'm always there. But, um, no, I, I hate missing on him. I liked Saunders a lot, too. Great player. Great kid. Um, you know, he seemed happy at BYU. He loves his coach, but it seems like BYU is, is where he wants to be. Good for him, man. Stay home. Go have fun. Yeah. Play ball. I, I, I'm good for him. Good kid. And, I'm and at too. BYU, he probably is going to get it starter minutes this year because yeah. he's been progressively getting better and better. Yeah. So I don't know if he would have found those minutes here. Yeah. So no bad blood between us, between Kentucky fans and Saunders. Heck no, good dude. I love man. that kid. He's awesome. Yeah. Great dude. So rude for him. Well, before we call today, really want to thank everybody. I mean, you all are just awesome. We went from like 722 subscribers to 828 subscribers in one episode. I mean, you all, I can't even put in the words. Amazing. We appreciate it. You know, the the, the road to a thousand, baby. We're rocking and rolling. Um, we couldn't Good do it without you all. You know, there's there's some podcasts that I see of, of people I know talking about different things. And there was one podcast I know the buddies do. Um, not buddies, you know, these are like media buddies. Um, and, and they're not going to listen to this and to think I'm crapping on them. But like, they um they've been doing it for like two years and they've got like 750 subscribers and i'm like we've been doing this for like three months i just the point is we really really appreciate your all support really we, we couldn't do this without you all listening mm -hmm. um liking commenting we really love it we love doing this we love bringing it to y'all and we appreciate that y'all are helping us out by hitting those buttons so if you haven't already hit that subscribe button we're so close to a thousand um, we really appreciate it. Hope everybody has an outstanding weekend. Have a great I got weekend. one thing. I got one thing. Give me one thing. Say something. I want, here's the question of the day, and I want to see the comments of responding. I I want you to give Mark Pope a grade so far. Okay. Whatever like letter that. grade you think he deserves, leave it in the comments. I can I'll pin that and you can I'll pin it in the YouTube comments and you can leave your thoughts underneath it. That and we'll do it again after the portal's over. That's a good mm -hmm. idea. Fun quote. That's a fun debate. Everybody have a great weekend. Appreciate you being here. Once again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit it, thumbs up, turn on those notifications. Really appreciate y'all being here. Everybody have an absolutely lit weekend, and we will see you next time.